In this video, I'm going to walk through taxes in Odoo, specifically sales taxes. So let's go into our accounting application. We'll go to configurations and settings. The first thing we want to look at is our default taxes. By default, the system picks some 15% taxes. I've already changed this one to 7%. This is our default sales tax as well as our default purchase tax. We have our tax return when we decide to pay our taxes or when our taxes are due. So whether it's monthly or annually, uh, quarterly, you can set that here. We have our reminder, so we can be reminded to close our tax period, let's say at the end of the month or seven days after the period ends. And then we have our miscellaneous journal that we have our taxes in. We also have our configure um, our tax accounts, so we can click on tax accounts. We can see our tax account right here, our default 15% sales tax account. So this is a group um, of taxes. We have our default tax payable, tax receivable, and the country of United States. So this is where you generally set some of your default settings for taxes. Next, we're going to get into how taxes work inside of Odoo. So let's go into our configurations chart of accounts. We'll search for our tax accounts. And we'll see we have four accounts here, but we're mainly going to focus on our tax received and tax payable. So as you can see, they're both current liabilities. We have our tax received account. This is for any sales tax coming in. So anytime we invoice a customer, this tax received account will get hit. And then we have a tax payable account. So Odoo differentiates between what we've received from clients versus what we owe for a given period or what we owe in total um, if we have an outstanding balance from the previous period. And the way we transfer this money is by closing our tax period inside of our tax report. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Of course, you can change these. If you have uh, multiple tax accounts, so you might have different sales tax accounts for different states um, or sub tax accounts. Maybe you have specialty product, products such as tobacco where you hold specific sales or um, specialty taxes. So you would have to create multiple accounts depending on how you wanna manage your books. But these are the two default ones that Odoo creates in the US localization for your chart of accounts. So next we're gonna to go to configurations and we're going to taxes. We'll see a list of our taxes. We have this tax 15% for purchases and we have this tax 7% for sales. Like I said, we're gonna focus on our sales tax. We're gonna to go to edit. We're gonna see our tax name is tax 7%. We have our computation, which is percentage of price. There's also fixed and uh, percentage of price that the tax is already included in, in the product. And then we have a group of taxes, so we can group other taxes that we create here into one tax group. We'll focus on percentage of price as this is the most common. We have the tax type, whether it's sales or for purchases. We have a set of sales. We have the scope, whether it's for goods or services, we can leave it blank so we can apply it to both. And then we have it our, our amount, so 7%. Next, we'll go to advanced settings. We'll see the label on invoices. We have this set as 7%, the tax group that this currently applies to, as well as the country. So let's look at the distribution for invoices and distribution for credit notes. What we wanna realize here is that, generally speaking, this is how every tax account or sales tax account will be set up. We have what we're telling the system here is that 100% of the tax on a given invoice line or a given invoice is going to go into this tax received account. We also have distribution for credit notes, which is 100% of this tax is going to go into tax receipts as well. The only difference between these two is the invoices. Obviously, we're receiving money, so we're going to be cr crediting our tax received account. And for credit notes, we're going to be refunding money, so we'll be debiting that tax received account. So let's go ahead and look at an invoice and see how our tax received account is hit. So we'll go into customer invoices. You'll see that we have a product sale, 
or a product one that we're selling, it's going to hit our product sale account. And we have taxes that 7% sales tax. So 7% of that $10 is 70 cents. And as you can see down here, we have our taxes as 70%. If we go to our journal items, you'll see that our tax received account gets hit for that 70 cents as well. So now let's look at that in our balance sheet. We'll go to balance sheet. We'll go to our current liabilities. You see that we have a balance of 70 cents in our tax received account. So now at the end of your period, what you want to do is move this tax received money into our tax payable. In order to do that, we're going to go to reporting and we're going to go to tax report. By default, we're looking at the previous month. So let's look at the current month. You'll see our tax 7%. If you had multiple taxes, they'd be lined up here. We have 70 cents due on $10 of total income. So now what we want to do is close this entry. I'm just going to adjust this closing entry to be today's date. Usually, of course, you'd do it at the end of the day. I mean, end of the month or end of the period. And as I said in the beginning, we're going to be debiting tax received to clear that out. We're going to be setting that to zero. And then our tax payable is going to get credited to increase the balance that we owe to the government. And of course, if you're doing this seven days or, you know, some period of time after you're closing your period, then this tax received account will ultimately not be zero because you would have had more sales come in for the new period. But we're going to move over everything from the previous period into or from tax received to tax payable. So we'll post this entry. We can look at our tax report that gets um, generated here, this PDF. And let's go to our balance sheet. And we'll see that our tax received account is now empty and our tax payable account has a balance of 70 cents. So now when we write our check to, let's say, our New York State for 70 cents, our bank account will create a new bank statement. And let's just pretend that we're paying that 70 cents to New York State tax. So minus 70 cents here. And we'll do this. We'll set the reference, let's just say 001. And we'll post and reconcile. See, we forgot to add a negative sign here. Post this, reconcile. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a manual operation. So we're going to post it right to our New York's, uh, right to our tax paid account. So, or tax payable. So we have our tax payable account here. We're going to post this right into our tax payable account in order to um, offset that balance that we owe. So now if we go to our balance sheet, we'll see our tax payable account in zero because we've just paid this. Now you can also create a vendor bill for those taxes or just create a payment for those taxes and then create a manual journal entry to offset that tax payable account at the end of the month or at the end of uh, whenever you decide to reconcile if you want to keep track of that vendor payment inside of Odoo. But it's not, it's not necessary. Um, if we wanted to go over a quick example of how you can do that, we can go into customer invoices. We'll just duplicate this invoice. This is going to have to be closed in our February account because we just closed January. So we'll just make it a February invoice. We'll register the payment. And now when we close our account, so we go to reporting, tax report, we can close entries. Let's see if we can close it for February, we might not be able to. We'll say February. And we can close this for February. So now we have that 70 cents doing the same thing, going from received to payable. So we'll post this. And now if you wanted to create a vendor bill or a vendor payment, we can create a new vendor payment 
for 70 cents and we can leave everything else blank we're going to be sending it from our bank account we'll confirm that we'll go to our dashboard create another payment and this is just in case you want to do it this way to keep track of that bill inside of odoo So we'll post. Again, forgot a negative sign, so let's post that. And we'll match it to the 70 cents here. And now we can create a manual journal entry. If we'd like to, from our, uh, well, at first we have to switch this to be February 28th. We can create a manual journal entry from our debiting our tax payable and crediting our accounts payable. So let's go ahead and create that. Create a new journal entry. Tax payable. We'll debit this. And accounts payable will credit. We want to do debit here, 0.7, and credit here, 0.7. And now we'll post this and look at our balance sheet for February. As you can see, both of our accounts balance out. So that's if you want to create that vendor bill inside of Odoo. There's also some more things that I'm not going to get into this video, but just to keep a, a lookout for is the use of fiscal positions in order to set taxes if you have multiple taxes. So if you have a fiscal position of New York or maybe you say New Jersey, we also do business in and we're going to say if a 15 or if a 7% sales tax is applied to the product. Instead, let's apply a different sales tax. It might be eight and a half percent. And then from there, you can do detect automatically. We can do the country, or I'm sorry, the country, we can do United States, and then we can do the state. So we'll do New Jersey. And now if the fiscal position, or if a, if a contact has the fiscal position set of for New Jersey's fiscal, fiscal position, then we'll automatically replace the sales tax um, on the point of sale as well as um, the invoice in order to replace the 7% with the applicable taxes. So that's something to keep in mind as well, um, that we're very flexible in the way that we can manage sales tax. So that's an overview of how taxes work.